Good evening, ladies and gents. Welcome to game two of Steel Damn Gaming vs. Premi Ag Mini. Took us a while to figure out how to pronounce that name, but Radiant's we finally got man. it. My name is Coldblood, and joining me for the second game in this best of three series, it will be Damn Hawksbok. Man. How are you? Yeah, pretty good, man. The first uh, game was fairly action packed. We Radiant's had a pretty good man. clock setting up the early games uh, from from PA Gaming, but uh, the, there was just too much carry and uh, too much, I suppose. Just too much explosions of damage, I guess. Hey, are you there, Hawks? Dyer's okay, pick. well, while we wait for him to come back, this is, of course, game two. Uh, this was, okay, so... Hopefully Hawk will call back in a second. He has been having internet problems Dyer's today. Pick. So this is game two. Steel Gaming currently one up in this best of three series. Only a friendly scrim, of course, but all is fun and games. We can see that Timbersaw again banned out by Steel Gaming. They will ban the Lich out themselves. Was played pretty well by Bloodlock in the last game. Maybe not so much early on, but later on he definitely had a strong impact in the fights. Elder Titan again banned out by Premi Ag Mini and Damn Warlock. Seconds going to be the other ban out. He Someone's is a very like strong a hero, as uh, seconds, apparently Bastion saying that Hawks has dropped out of the game. Chen will be the first pick up for Premier Agmini. We saw him played very well uh, last week, with uh, particularly the um, the presence he had with all the the pushing and whatnot, and uh, that was some pretty awesome plays with the Wild Fang Ripper, or whatever it is, the bird thing that channels the tornado. And uh, for the Steel Gaming guys, they're going to once again pick up Crystal Maiden, and Undying going to be the other pickup. Oh, good. So that'll be very interesting strength. Going to be stolen away there About from time. that guy and some zombies. Looks like Hawksbok is back in the go. game, so hopefully gives me a call any second here. Second pickup for Premi Agmini. They're running out of time, so they either got to pick or draw on the reserve time. They do indeed reserve go into the time. reserve time. And uh, I'm wondering what they will pick up. I'm mixing my, missing my good buddy Hawks, who uh, does all this kind of hard stuff for me. We are calling him back now. Apologies for this, guys. Is uh, apparently no answer. Clockwork going to be locked in again by the Premi Agmini guys. For those who don't know, that is Latin for Vanguard. So I'm wondering if we'll see the item Vanguard picked up at all. He will be in the off lane, potentially a dual laning, uh, should it be required uh, with uh, as a response to steel. Was played ten very well by Lizzie G. We'll have to see if it's once again locked in by him or her. Five and Hawks seconds. has rejoined me. Yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, <laughs> just in the middle of one of my boring long Reserve speeches time. anyway, I dare say. <laughs> oh, glad you're Didn't back. Didn't miss out on much, folks. Um, so hopefully you're back in the hero like There's going to be an Undying for Steel now, so that'll be pretty exciting. Yeah, Undying with that uh, tomb can cause all kinds of havoc, man. And uh, PA getting that clockwork pick up again, but hopefully getting played by Lizzie G again. She was really busting out those early, um, early hook shots, man. Mm. Also, oh, Alchemist is going to be the ban out by Premi Agmini. They, uh, I guess they know that Steel very good on the carries. They don't want one that scales incredibly well with gold. Gyro going to be banned, banned out by Steel, which is fair enough. He was played very well in the last game by Mr. Black. So, uh, not going to be going against him. So the carries are the focus now. We'll have to wonder if they are for the second round. Outworld Devourer by Pri Dyer's Premi man. Agmini. They were the ones who utilized that one, actually, and didn't work out the best for them, but probably because the matchup wasn't favorable. And, uh, I'm wondering if Premi Agmini were going for some kind of, uh, mass strength hero strategy that now will be interrupted, or, um... Perhaps not. As a shout out to, he's got a very hard font to read, Hawks. So I'll Dyer's give it a go. Pick. Seven Cerberus Seven, who says the intro is awesome. Thank you. That was done by Super Roach, an awesome guy over at GameStar. And Vengeful Spirit gonna be the last ban out here, Hawks. She is very strong support. I believe she's the best hero with zero. Like uh, if if you get every hero with zero items, she's the strongest or something like that. Well, she does have a fairly good aura there, and also negative armor, uh, good single pit. target stun. We yeah, do oh god, that stun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the stun is definitely uh, quite painful. So, I suppose, yeah, you could be right in saying that. Um, 
you know, she also does have the option of going through the BKB with the swaps there. That can really uh, screw with people's positionings. Common counter to Enigma and and uh, Heroes of the Such with those long, uh, long Dyer's channels. Big. And uh, we're going to see Venom, man. I love a bit of Venom and big. Tinker. So th there's some two pretty hard pushes there. And uh, obviously a shitload of team fight through the Venom. Is it just me or does Venom to look different? Yes, yes, yeah, oh, yeah. They have changed a few models. Yeah, I saw Storm Spirit got changed. The um, on the the top fails from Dota Cinema, the guy uh, it was apparently na uh, remodeled after the guy called Reeves on there. The Ten American, uh, he loves Storm Spirit, and he's very annoyed that they changed him. And uh, yeah, Five I didn't know seconds. Venno is looking different. He looks very much scarier now. As Clink's going to be the lock-in, so very, uh, oh, very squishy AD carry, but not AD carry. So I don't want to talk and carry, but a lot of damage output if he does get left alone. Yeah, Clink's, uh, he's pretty versatile in the fact that early game he doesn't really need uh, a significant amount of farm just for the early game because uh, his searing arrows and uh, strength can just put out significant amount of damage. Also, uh, smashes those towers down with strength Reserve and um, the searing arrows. So, yeah, that's a decent pick up there. He's a little bit squished early on until he gets his ult with the death pack. Then he becomes, yeah, pretty damn tank, Ben. Mm. Okay, so I'm looking forward to seeing the Tinker. I was having a go at him uh, the other day. It was very fun with the, uh, the Boots band. of Travel and the Potion and the Soul Ring. So I'm expecting to see the same kind of thing there. Like you said, Hawk's a lot of pushing power, and uh, the Venno, of course, not as mobile, but can uh, push very hard. We saw some awesome Venomancer of play picking up Ten kills post-mortem in uh, the Tide's Wrath tournament which was Five very seconds. awesome. As Templar Assassin can be banned out by Steel Gaming, I believe that was banned out last game as well, Reserve which uh, tells me there's someone very good at TA on Premier Mini who is not getting to utilize that. As the um, the Premier Mini guys, they're going to be looking to ban out an offlane here. Yeah, offlane or uh, second support. Um... Oh, Undying, can he offlane? Oh. Uh, bounty hunter here would be the logical ban out, I'd say, for the for the counter to Clinks and also gives them that off laning. But they choose the Nagus proper. Uh, BH should probably be a pretty good pickup in 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 this circumstance if I was still gaming. Oh, I'll have to see if they heed your advice. Hopefully they don't hear that before they actually pick. Um, so, Undying, he's uh, not got too much to steal strength from, but of course, the Tombstone with the zombies going to make it quite hard for Lizzie G to get Ten into the right position, which may be the, uh, the logic there, try and make it a little bit harder for him to get exactly where he wants to go. Still gaming, they may draw on their reserve time here, they do reserve indeed, time. for the last pick. And uh, I'm wondering if uh, YYSM is going to play the Tinker. He did a very good job at mid razor in the last game, and his picture is actually Tinker. So uh, I would say he very much likes his hero hawk. So I, I think if he doesn't, if nothing screws with him early on, he's going to be very annoying for Premier Agmini to deal with. Yeah, fair enough, dude. Uh, they're, they're, they're taking their time with this. I mean, it's, it's for me, hundred percent. You'd have to pick the BH, right? You, you, you'd you have something like a defensive tri lane with Undying and CM and Lunar at, you know, at top, or... or, or uh, I suppose defensive tri lanes don't really work these days, but, I mean, it, it's it's just that really strong counter to, to Clinks there. Yeah, well, they, they gives, have... Gives uh, them everything they need. They have Timbersaw available. He was banned out by PA in the last game. Tim Timbersaw was first band dude. Oh, sorry, yeah, he was too. Okay, I don't know why I, <laughs> I didn't see that. Sorry, my bad. Uh, well, they're definitely running out of time. Timbersaw not available for them. The bounty hunter is, and um, wondering what else is going to be. Shout out to Bul Bulvi, Bulvi, who uh, is saying that his own crystal Five maiden is seconds. too strong, and Meepo. So the uh, most micro-intensive hero. Uh, we didn't expect that one. Nah, man, he like, 
Uh, barely gets picked and fuck. Uh, nearly swore there. My bad. <laughs> oh, you swore in, earlier. In, it's all right. In, in pugs, man. Let alone in uh in the old draft. It's not often you get to see him. But I tell you what, man. Good Meepo's late game can just absolutely hurt. By the way, a shout out to Bloodlock because uh, uh, he's shedding himself out there because go. he has no friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if you picked up that one in the chat there, but yeah, I had, I had to do that. Shout out to my... Okay, <laughs> I didn't, didn't even know that chat was there, to be honest with you. And Cerberus is saying, Premiag Meanie sounds like a tiny penis. It's Latin for Vanguard. So, uh, it's it's much cooler than it sounds, I guess. So, reserve time being drawn on by Premiag Meanie. They need someone who can deal with global pressure, as it's definitely going to be coming at them. Luna pushes very hard. Tinker and Meepo both capable of being in multiple places at almost the same time. And definitely the same time in Meepo's uh, state. I've only seen Meepo once, and he Five fed seconds. horrifically. And he was on the enemy team, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, so obviously, at my skill level, he's not going to be too good. Viper, going to be the last pickup. So probably going to be pretty strong against the Tinker early on. Although Tinker does have a blind, I believe. Which may be a little bit annoying. Yes, he does have a blind. So I'm wondering if Hookie is going to get some Watch roaming going on early on. As uh, Bastion says, what's with all the scribbling? And uh, we see Lizzie G once again has his clockwork. Bullvi going to once again get the Crystal Maiden. I'm assuming Bloodlock will get the Undying there. Reality Marvel on the Chen. Looking forward to seeing him. I was saying, while you were getting back in the game, Hawks, we saw a very strong Chen, Chen in uh, the last game we cast. Yeah, Not tonight, is... but uh, last week, I mean. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, that was definitely a pretty strong chain there. Um, the Viper pickup is actually go. a really good counter to Tinker there because um, I'm 100% sure that it, with his corrosive skin there, if he sits inside, um, you know, if he gets a bit tanky, of course, and sits inside uh, the marching machines there, that'll wreak havoc to, uh, to himself there. He'll just be slowing himself and disabling his blink and, and taking... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he, he'll he'll get hurt by that, uh, so yeah. Oh, well, definitely fair enough. We'll have to see if it uh, gets locked in. YYSM saying shout out to my mate Kevin Wong. Shadow Prophets Veno, so we're looking forward to some good plays from that incoming Mr. Gales. <laughs> Uh, we'll go through the team, T-Hawks, even though they're not really moving. So, representing the 0-1 down Premi Ag Mini, the Vanguard Boys, Phantom Assassin, it will be, as we get the game paused out of the way, it will be Shadow Prophet on the Venomancer. Apparently, he's quite good at that. We'll have to see. Mr. Black on the Clinks. In the mid lane, we will have Hookie Shinono. Off lane, Lizzie G with the clockwork. He has shown that he is he or she is very good at that. And Reality Marble on the Chen. Yeah, for Steel Gaming, we're going to have Bloodlock on the Undying there. We're going to have Bullvi on the CN. Tyrant X on the Meepo. Chris, uh, Crestfallen on the Luna and YYSM on Zatinka. Okay, so uh, I guess Tyrant X has shown that he has some decent micromanagement skills with the Lone Druid. So uh, Meepo is definitely a step up from that. We'll have to see how he goes. We will be getting into the game here, hopefully. Yes, it is on pausing. And I'm wondering if we're going to see any early smoke of deceits picked up for some shenanigans early on. Corio going to be picked up by Chen on the... Uh, Played by Reality Marble game, immediately paused as Tyrant X is going to once again go for the Quelling Blade. Doesn't have a pan to bed, put it on this time. Uh, no, yet. Okay. He doesn't, but he's got a whole shitload of himself. <laughs> okay, yep, that's fair enough. I think they only get the, they only share the boots. Something like that. They own, uh, the, the, the original one has items and the other ones only get whatever kind of boots he has. That's probably right, man. Honestly, I, I've never actually played him. He's the only Dota hero that I've never played. Oh, well, there you go. I, I don't have the Asian blood in me to be able to control him. <laughs> I'm not playing StarCraft, guys. I can't do it. Ah, oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, I can do it alright, man. But as yeah. far as I know... Meepo is, is uh, if, if he's split up enough, he can do some massive nuking with the poofs. He's just got to be careful. Poofs. 
is, uh, I don't know how to say that without sounding terrible. Uh, it's capable of a lot of burst damage, but of course if one dies, they all die, so you've got to be very careful with that. And the Earthbind can be chained, which makes him very, very dangerous on single targets. So, uh, Premier Gmini gonna have to look after that one. PhD saying Meepo got nerfed in the last patch. I'm not sure what that one was. So, uh, apparently we're having some, uh, bargaining for Bloodlock here. He's not gonna switch teams anytime soon. And the teams will be edited out here, Hawksbuck. Hopefully Bloodlock can buy items. He can indeed. Yeah, fair enough. Well, they do get a Smoke of Deceit, so, uh... Have to see. Oh, it says he has smoke of deceit, but it's not in the items. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, how are they gonna land this? We're gonna have Hooky Min? Yeah, we're gonna have Hooky Min, I think. And it'll be clocking on that off lane, and then we'll have uh, Chen inside the jungle, obviously. Has he got any space? Oh, no, wow, that oh. Venomance looks awesome, man. It looks so cool. Yeah, oh, I'm a fan of the new model. A lot of people aren't, but I reckon it's bad. Oh, I think he looks like a Hydralisk, which is only yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember the button it is to do time. the cinematic thing. Hang on, let me try and find it here. Um, I pressed it in the last game accidentally, and it was it looked awesome, but now I can't figure out which button it was. Okay, whatever. So, <laughs> we can see the awesome Venomancer model there. Um, the last one was kind of plain, I thought. It was it was very basic, which I you know Venomance is an awesome hero. They have updated, uh, you know, I suppose added a lot of Damn definition into the reworks they've done so far. The one uh, my favourite so far is Necro, yeah, and they changed his name as well. But um, yeah, Necro's model looks good too. It looks like they're kind of slimming down the the bigger heroes because because there was that and then the Storm. Uh, you know, they, they were all quite round, I suppose. Yeah, and, uh, yeah they're, they're, they're making them lose a bit of weight. Nice block by um, by Lizzie there, blocking off the creeps there, so that lane will push closer to her lane. Mm. Well, I'll definitely, to her tower, definitely be happy with that one. It will be a 1v1 this time, so we will have the uh, 2v3 down at the bottom as Chen will be in the jungle, but of course he has the uh, potential of running out with some very annoying creeps. The Troll Summoner was definitely the best used, utilized in the last one between the ganking with Ensnare and pushing with Raised Dead. Looks like he will be doing the same there. As we have Bullvi, it's actually is a 2v1 at bottom so far. As, oh no, sorry, 2v2. With uh, Crystal Maiden, looks like he will be heading up to the top lane. He does have the Frostbite available. Meepo doesn't have any uh, abilities yet. Cog's going to go off, does a little bit of damage there. Oh, Lizzy G, he has blocked himself off from the tower. Tyrant X going to be taking a lot of damage here. He does hit the level 2. Frostbite going to go off, but it looks like Steel not going to go in with that one. Probably a good decision there as uh, Laser goes off in the mid and Hookie's attacks stop hitting. And at the bottom lane, we can see Clinks at 8 compared to... Uh, what is he against? Luna on 3. So I think until Luna gets some levels, she's going to find her low range will make it very difficult for her. Yeah, and a harassment as well. She'll probably lose that battle as well. Um, the Searing Arrows, they're doing a significant amount of damage early game. Also, uh, they're getting the pulls down in the, um, in the bot lane there. Or the stacking before pulling. I think he might have missed that one though. Yeah, it looks like he did, because it's not watered. No, definitely. So, we can see the Venomancer, who is Shadow Prophet. There was, uh, he's got the Venomous Gale, he does not yet have Plague Ward. There was some kind of shout out about him missing every single Gale. So we'll have to see how that goes, and if he can uh, get some kills post-mortem, which is a cool uh, little thing. Yeah, the camp's going to be stacked up here. Lizzie G stealing some experience away oh, yeah. as he throws out the Rocket Flare. Not going to do too much. Uh, looks like most of this going Dyer's to go over to Tyrant X. Top tower taking a little bit of damage. Nothing too severe at the moment. YYSM going to be pushing up here. He definitely wants to get as much farm as possible. To reach the uh, the soul ring, or at least the boots of travel, he does have his bottle, as he will bottle the illusion rune. Going to be pretty happy with that one. It was the one that spawned at the start. As uh, we got a two v one up at the top, with a two v two at the bottom because Chen's in the jungle. What do you think about that decision, Hawks? 
Yeah, that's good. Clockwork is um is a capable offlaner here. A little bit of harass going out on him right now. But yeah, as you were saying with the pulls up top there, there, there was actually a recent change with how the creeps um give experience. Uh, it, it, it used to be whichever team got the last hit would get that exp right. Yeah. Um, whereas these days it's um uh, it, it's given in an AOE, so uh it's it's actually so you can stand there and leech some. Yeah, which is exactly what he was doing, and he's level four. Um, over uh, what have we got here? Level three crystal maiden and uh, just freshly uh, level four Meepo. By the way, awesome top hat. Yeah, <laughs> I really like that one. He is going to use the. I'm not sure how to say his W without making it sound really weird. Poof, 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 poof. poof. You have to say it like a poof, like uh, like like uh, what's his name? Puck. Say it like the way he says it. And. Uh, I don't know how that makes it sound less gay, but uh, we'll leave that to the viewers as Arcane Aura going to be the level up for Bullvi, giving his team some global minor regeneration. As Bloodlock going to be running forward here, the stun goes down onto Mr. Black, but he will sprint his way out of there. He's going to have some of his strength stolen away, it looks like, for the second time in recent as Tinker gonna get himself a regen rune he'll be very happy with getting that one as Tinker is a mana hungry beast when he uses his abilities does he have much of machines yet no so he is going for the uh, the ganking route to try and save up for the boots of travel he's got the boots of speed at the moment as clockwork going to disconnect and immediately the other team does the pausing so good guy bloodlock uh, pausing immediately when the enemy disconnects yeah, fair enough. That's some uh, good sportsmanship there. <laughs> He's uh, a bit of banner going there. I got that F9 ready for pack pauses, yo. <laughs> oh man, I um, whenever someone pauses in game and they they give no reason, I just try like spamming all the F buttons to find out which one is unpause, and I <laughs> I, I, I I cause some trouble for myself. <laughs> There you go, F9 is the way to go. Let's have a look at the bottom lane. What's going on here? Uh, Clinks is sitting on 21 creeps versus 18 for 6 on that Luna. Experience-wise, fairly, actually, Venno's a little bit behind. Venno's only a level 2, whereas uh, Bloodlock on the support there, he's level 4. So he's doing himself a decent job there, uh, still managing to stay in the EXP range. Yeah, he's, um, he's been roaming around the jungle quite a lot. Maybe they expected some roaming coming out from the Tinker or something, who does have significant burst and long-range finishing off power. You would expect Clinks to be closer to level 5 than he is, considering he's been sitting in this lane by himself. But I guess uh, th there's a decent threat there between the Lucent Beam and the uh, whatever Bloodlock is capable of doing. Ralph steals Carl's girl. <laughs> Not sure what that's a reference to. Shout out to Raph. Shout out to <laughs> Ralph. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, what what Undying does there, uh, like other than the Tombstone, he's got uh, Decay, which is his main other spell. Um, Decay will remove uh, strength from that hero. So, so yeah, we'll see a couple of stacks on the Clinks now, which uh, makes him quite squishy. Uh, taking away um, eight points. He's got two stacks there, so yeah, eight points of strength, which is <laughs> nearly a hundred. Mr. Black wants to know where Undying is. We're not going to be doing that. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> we, we won't look at bot lane for a little bit. As we can see, Tyrant X is going to be running around with one of his Meepo clones. He's going to be uh, leveling, oh, sorry, healing up with the Trank quite easily there. And yeah, I was right. The uh, Meepo's they only get the boots going to be farming away there on the Ogre Frostman. As in the mid lane, we didn't see any uh, sh early shenanigans on Hoogie Shinono. So he's doing better than he was in the last game. He's only a little bit behind in the farm. He's got almost 800 gold to himself at the moment. As we see, Mr. Black going to be jumped on by Bloodlock Brilliant and Crestfallen. Crestfallen taking a tower hit for his troubles. Shadow Prophet is going to take a uh, do a lot of damage. And I think this may be first blood onto Crestfallen here with a uh, a very timely pause there. Reality Marble coming in. I'm not sure what happened here, Hawks. Was the tornado used or was that just a uh, unfortunately timed tower dive by Steel? It would have been a tower dive, I dare say. Uh, Mr. Black was quite low on HP there. He has popped the uh, salve, though, so he's going to be getting back into this fight. And, yeah, Crest would have uh, taken the aggro with the auto attacks, and he's about to get dunked. 
Yeah, I'd say the first blood's definitely going to be coming out here. If I had to guess, I'd say it's going to Shadow Prophet. And of course, once he picks up the Poison Nova, he becomes very annoying. Mr. Black not going not gonna to get an assist because I'd say as soon as he got jumped on, his skeleton walked the heck out of there. I'm not sure, but is that Luna in her animation to give out a lucent thing yeah she's got it selected it's, it's yeah it's not gonna kill it's not gonna kill shadow profit anyway um but it looks like uh the the first blood will go to reality marble there his um his ripper there is about to about to take out um crest there it'll be interesting to see what bloodlock is gonna do about this he's gonna have to try to like oh, i don't know maybe <laughs> So, blood, uh, oh, was wow. that? oh, he denied, did he? No. Uh, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what happened. Tower. I think he did actually get the Lucent Beam off, and then uh, Bloodlock was able to get um, uh, the Decay off at the same time, which gave him the first blood, which is not oh. the worst result for him. Reality is uh, following it up on Bloodlock. Radiant he does have his, uh, his Test of right Faith now. off. Um, but he's not going to be able to get it off as Luna TPs back into uh, lane there. So, yeah, there you go. Much First better for blood. Steel than we were imagining. Yeah, yeah, I thought, yeah, it was it was like a first blood for sure, definitely going that way. Okay, so Tango Share dropped here by the Veno. Not sure where that is. It, oh, it looks like he's going to give a Tango to poor Shinoki Nono as Regeneration Rune going to be popped and a Shadow Rune going to be picked up. Not Shadow, sorry, Invisibility. As uh, let's take such stock of the Meepos. We've got run, one running into the jungle here. I think he only actually has one at the moment. Yep, so it's going to be running over to take the XP from uh, Bullvi as the main Meepo going to stand in the lane here. Oh, Sh Hookie Shinono is going to take the Tango. It's got a cooldown at the moment. YSM, he's popped the invisibility rune, man. I'm not sure if he's going to try and go for it. He doesn't yet have Heat Seeking Missile, which would do a lot of uh, damage to Hookie. He's going to get out of there. Did use the Viper Strike, so we can assume that he utilized that to get out. Uh, we'll have a look at the last hits. Tyron X doing a good job of farming up with his doppelganger. Mr. Black following up with 38 and 2 denies. As Crestfallen doing very well considering how far behind he's been put by the game's events thus far. As Huki Shinono is back, he does have the Viper Strike and a Clockwork will be coming in here. I don't see how YYCM is going to be able to get out of this one. He gets Hookshot up already and he's going to be trying to sprint out of there. We'll get healed up by... Uh, I'm not sure what keep to Lizzie G alive there, but does manage to do it. He popped the bottles, and uh, very well done by Premi Agmini here. Yeah, it was uh, the Hand of God there. So oh, he, right. Yeah, yeah, Chen. yeah, the Hand of God playing by Chen. He's definitely finding some uh, good amount of experience, which is, which is yeah, timely. I'm timely glad I got you here, Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that guy. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Clips on... Sorry, you go. I was about to say that's that's definitely um, a win there for Viper in mid. There, it's gonna it's gonna let him catch up a few in levels and also uh, put Tinker behind, uh, trying to get those boots in trouble. Mm. He's still not that far away. He's he's still you know 900 gold away. So once he gets those BOTs up, we can we can expect to see some pretty annoying uh, split pushing and, and all kinds of business from uh, him. Yeah, we've seen uh, that he's decided to neglect the soul ring for at least for the time being. As we can see, double Meepo here, double Poof on to the Hellbores. Uh, I think there is still only one Meepo running around. What's the next level he can upgrade? That doesn't actually tell us, so we'll have to wait probably like level 8 or 9 or something. As uh, someone was past a Tango. May have been Viper, no. Uh, Power Trade's going to be picked up by Lizzie G on the Clockwork, who's still having a little bit of a hard time, only at 24. Although Huki Shinono also having a very tough time of it. As uh, We'll have a look at the gold here. Hawks definitely in Steel's favour, despite them uh, being a kill down. I'd say that's because of the farm difference. XP in PA's favour, it looks like it has tower. been for the majority of the game. And... Uh, when uh, Steel have a Meepo who wants to be uh, farming around, they'd probably want to be on top of the XP the there. Mr. Black is uh, doing a little bit of taunting in Orchard. May, may be too early to get overconfident here, Hawks. I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure.
sure you're familiar with uh, trash talking. Says, so oh, looks like YSM is going to be jumped on top here. Lizzie G, he is going to be taking more damage from the towers as the cogs will trap him in there. Shadow Prophet going to fall very quickly there. And Hookie gets ensnared up by one of the Meepos. Oh, looks like both of them are there. And that was a nice turnaround from Steel Gaming. Walk out with a two for one after the tower dive from Lizzie. Yeah, tail dive some uh, this early is quite um, quite risky there due to that TP support coming in there with the uh, Tomb Man. It just really slowed any form of escape there. Uh, Lizzie was able to get away and she's going to be having a look around for another kill now. She does have that Invis Rune and scoping out a uh, level 6 Crystal Maiden. But she's just going to be stacking some creeps. I wonder if he's going to go for the Surely he is. Yeah, I'd say it looks like he will come out with the battery assault and pops the cogs. Bullvi can't do a single thing about this. The uh, meat sick and missiles come out from YYSM, Lizzie G, very well done there. So it ends up in a two for two if you connect that to the last fight, which I believe he was also the one to start. Again, doing very well on the clockwork. We'll have to see if he can actually finish out the game this time. Meepo is still divided. We stand is at level one. Crestfallen starting to catch up in the farm even more. Trank boots picked up by CM. She'll be happy with that one, despite dying. Smoke of Deceit popped by the uh, the Phantom... Uh, sorry, no, not Phantom. Premier Agmini, guys. And they're going to be doing some hunting on this Meepo here. All they have to do is kill one to kill them all, Hawks. As it uh, looks like nice back off from Tyrant X there. As, uh, oh, we see we actually miss a kill down at the bottom lane. Bloodlock has popped the ultimate. Looking very tanky there, Chen. Going to fall. The Centaurs are all going to go down. Meanwhile, Mr. Black forced to back tower. out. And we're going to miss Venomancer taking down Tinker's head in the mid lane. So one for one across the teams. We can see that Lizzie G will get out. Bloodlock teleports in. Not going to be able to do too much about it. And uh, yeah, so it ends up being Die one for one. one fairly the even tower. off their hooks. Bottom, uh, bottom tower going to be taking a lot of damage. Tyrant X looks like he's headed off to farm as it looks like the experience and the gold have sure no they are the same as before they're only more intense and a double damage rune spawns at the bottom part of the river. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a bit of a contest over it too. Lizzie going for it, as is uh, Bloodlock. But, um, yeah, it, he's quite scared of that, obviously. Uh, Lizzie G being level 9 has the um, level 4 battery assault. But, yeah, since you missed both of those fights, well, I'll tell you what would happen. The Chen actually came smoke through this area, come up with the Luna, uh, to the Luna, only barely just missed a Centaur Stomp. And then the TP support came in for the turnaround kill as we're about to see another gank in this same area. Crestfallen does bust the Eclipse Man. Hand of God also being popped there. Lizzie G in a fair bit of trouble with the Meepo bleaking in. Viper Strike dominating the uh, Crystal Maiden there, dude, as, uh, as Undying getting taken down at the back of Y, I believe. As uh, the tombs are going to town right now on Chen and also Viper as they're trying to retreat away from this man. Look at that slow on Chen. He, he's. He can't even get away from oh, it. He, get dunked. he should have decided just to, you know, uh, kill that um, tomb as, as the rest of the team, and they probably would have got away from that unscathed. Yeah, well, they did have Lizzie G going down to all the bursts that went out, so it was a 4 for 2 in the end. Premier Gmini is going to be pretty happy with that one. Nice play by Bloodlock on the Undying to uh, get his horde of zombies to pick him up a kill post-mortem. I saw the, the the Poison Nova go out from Shadow Prophet. I feel like it was a little bit late to have Radiant enough of an impact in the fight, up. but obviously he knows a lot better than me. The XP earned has shifted into PA's favor, and they're going to pick up the gold... Oh, sorry, no, the, the experience is always in their favor, the but they're going to get the most gold, so the, uh, the ones who are 0-1 down in this best of three series, Hawks, uh, looking pretty strong so far. They finally got the gold in their lead for the first time in two games. And we'll have to see if they can cement that. 
It is 4-1-4, Lizzie G, as Mr. Black going to take a decay and a lucent beam. There will be a flare coming off it. Oh, Meepo's going to teleport in. There is three of him there. That is a lot of damage, but he used the Blink Dagger to get in. Going to take down the tower as well, and just like that, Steel Gaming going to turn it around. Got the gold advantage now. XP still heavily in PA's favor, but very well done there by Tyranex. Yeah, he's uh, been that quite active since getting that blink dagger up and running. Then he's uh, he's caused oh. a couple of violent good fights. Heat seeking missile snipe there on poor Shadow Prophet. That was well done. Oh, there you go, and Tinker picking up a bit of love too. Is he rocking BOTs? That is surely yeah. So they're up and running now. So he's going to be able to uh, roll around the map and um. Doesn't actually really have much of machines yet though. <laughs> No, he doesn't, but he's, but he's going to be able to go from lane to lane and get mm. a, a lot of EXP, um, and also significantly add into team of, uh, into team fights there. So, man, yeah, he's got, yeah, four points in heat-seeking missiles and in the uh, laser there, the laser being true damage as well. Okay, so Vlad's offering picked up by Bloodlock on the Undying, and I would assume that increases uh, oh, all those benefits would go to all the zombies and whatnot, would make him pretty decent when he pops the Flesh Golem form, and going to be helping out Crestfallen there as he's going to be farming away. Does have Helm of the Dominator, Soul Ring going to be picked up by the Tinker, so... A little bit later than I thought, but he does uh, end up picking that one up as a frostbite going to go off. Oh, nice hook shot by Lizzie G on the bullvite going to fall there. That was fantastically done as Bloodlock going to come in, pops the decay. Tinker going to get a kill onto Clinks, which I'm not sure where that was. It was down at the bottom lane. Looks like an assist went to the Meepo. So one for one in the meantime, but the top tower will indeed be falling for uh, Steel Gaming as Premier Mini going to last hit that one on their clockwork and teleport out of there so this one's looking a lot closer Hawks yeah his trade's going all across the map right now and uh, Lizzie G once again is is just really dominating on this uh, clock man just landing those hook Dyer's shots man. she's really not Dyer's missing I think she's missed one this entire series I think from memory yeah so if she um if it hits a non-neutral unit, I assume the zombies count as non-neutral units, so in the team fights, she may be crippled a little bit by that. We'll have to see how it goes. He's going once again for the Ag Scepter, and he's almost at 2,000, so he's getting closer and closer. Finishing it, the Eclipse goes out up at the top lane. Huki Shinono going to be finished off from the laser by YYSM. He's got two points on the March of the Machines. You are absolutely right, Hawks. He's getting a lot of XP at the moment. Lizzie G going to pop the Power Cogs, going to try and sprint his way out of there. He does have a Haste Rune, and he will manage to get out. Oh, Tyranek! Is going to be poofing all in. All three of them go in, but the hand of God is going to be popped by Chen there as Bloodlock doing a lot of damage. Double kill from YYSM on the Tinker. Going to throw out another March of the Machines. Clinks running for his life down at the bottom part. Will manage to get out of there. Ends up being a three for one in Steel Gaming's favor. Beautiful reaction to the tower dive. Yeah, man, the. Um... Mr. Black even coming in for a uh, kill, just missing out on one auto attack on a kill on the Crystal Maiden, which definitely would have been better in their favor. But he's nearly got his um, Orchid, his Orchid yeah, up and running, which is going to help them significantly in those games. He's going to be able to roam through their jungle and really, you know, pick up, uh, pick up their supports and even... Probably the Lunar, if she doesn't have a BKB rocket, might be able to pick up a kill on her. Yeah, level 11 versus, what have we got, a level 12? Yeah, with an Orchid, that's probably going to be an easy kill there. And also, uh, the Invisibility going to make it uh, make it a lot easier for Lizzie to get those hooks on, dude. Okay, yeah, so Lizzie G, once again, is going for the Ag Scepter, like we've already said. Uh, he was He will miss some gold from dying in that previous fight, as uh, you still definitely be happy with that one. Vastly ahead in the favour of uh, Gold Urn. Oh, there. here we go. Hookie going down in the middle once again. It looks like... Oh, no. Magic Stick and Bottle isn't going to save him. Oh, wow. <laughs> well done. Gets out by a puffed pube of health. <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure we can't say that. Radiant stuff. Oh, uh, prob probably not, but that's an old uh, pop name. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, absolutely freaking hilarious. Oh, even if it's inappropriate, it's definitely Radiant's right. He barely got it out of that one. Hit. Wasn't even watching, apparently, says Ugi. So it manages to get out. Top tower gonna fall to Luna. Very fast pusher, obviously. As teleports coming in. Hookie has rejoined the action. Reality Marble is there. I don't think he used the hand of God there. That was purely Hookie uh, reacting to a situation he really shouldn't have been in in the first place. A lot of items being finished up here. Tinker's four stuff going and of course he can reset the cooldown on that with the rearm. As Oh, nice rock, uh, global flare coming out from the clockwork. Uh, we had some other items picked up. We're getting close to BKB for the Lunar. Meepo's picked up the Ag Scepter, which uh, adds an extra Meepo and increases the shared attribute percentage, so each of the clones will be a little bit stronger individually. And, of course, you can have another one. As the mid-tower with that uh, the pack leader's aura from the wolf, that's going to be doing a lot. As we can see, the uh, jump forward from Mr. Black going to be sprinting out of there. Hookie gets absolutely crushed as Poison Nova goes out onto all the Meepos, but AoE's not good enough against him as March of the Machine goes out. It is currently a two for two. Mr. Black not going to be able to do anything against the army of midgets going against him. Divider we stand not even at full level yet as the Plague Ward's going to be cleared out. Radiant's that was very well was done by shape. Steel Gaming there. As Reality Marble <laughs> is going to barely get out with YYSM chasing him down. Thank you for picking that one, Hawks. No worries, don't. <laughs> so, that was crazy. With uh, Steel, they're now at over a 3,000 gold lead, similar in the XP. So we could have a 2-0 sweep in this series as Invisibility Ruin spawns at the bottom part of the river. The final Tier 1 tower, apart from uh, Bot Radiant for Steel, the, the mid-tower may be going down. March of Machine's going to go off. Crest Fallen also going to have to back off. I'm looking for some more global presence from YYSM. He's uh, gripping with his team a lot more than they normally do. His, uh, the machines are going absolutely crazy. We have now have another creep wave going in. As Tyrant X going to be dominating after picking up the Venomancer's head there. And the tier one in the mid going to be falling for Preemie, Ag, and Meanie here. Radiant mid tower. Mr. Black going to try and save the bottom tower. He will do so successfully. But the last T1 structure up is for Steel Gaming at the bot. And the structures for Preemie, Ag, Meanie. Looking fairly healthy at the moment. But, I mean, against a Tinker and a Meepo, it's going to be very difficult to defend against that. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of split push there, and um, I suppose the Clinks is actually quite equipped to um, to deal with the Tinker. The Meepo, though, might be another story. He's uh, he's looking quite strong in the moment. What's his net worth at? Uh... Oh, well, actually, okay, he doesn't have as much as I thought. <laughs> Okay, so looks like uh, Hooky should no, no, no is going to pick up the regen room, sprint his way out of there with the phase boots, working towards the Manta style Tyrant X, obliterating this ancient granite golem. As Mr. Black was caught in the mid, but he will get out there as Bullvise hanging around with the oh no, not smoker to see it. It will be the invisibility rune. As, uh, let's see, we have Crestfallen up at the top with, uh, oh, it looks like the Tyrant X's, all four of them going to be wailing away at Roche here. Periodic damage going out from the Geostrike Bull by getting ready to zone the enemy should they approach Bloodlock also nearby, should his presence be required, but I don't think... Uh, the PA guys are aware of this, or at least they're not feeling up to uh, contesting it. Looks like P uh, Shadow Prophet will throw a Plague Ward in. They know that Roche Trouble is getting enemy. started, but the Blink tower. Dagger going to go out from Tyrant X. And nice reaction from Shadow Prophet there to stop that sneaky little attempt. Uh, the uh, the ward will be taken down now, and that has signaled Lizzie G to spam flares there to see what happens. It looks like they haven't stopped just yet, Hawks, as uh, all the Meepos come back in. YYSM is there. The flare's going to go off. Much of the machine's going to be doing a lot of damage to Roche here, and I don't think the uh, the Premier Mini guys are going to be here in time. Heat Seeking Missile going to do a lot of damage there. We can see Facebook. It's going to be popped, and the, uh, the Viper cannot steal that one in the end. And now now, one of the Meepos has an Aegis. I think that only affects the main one. 
so I'm not sure he'll, uh, he has two lives if he gets all the copies out, as the Nova's gonna go down under Hooky Shinono, takes a heat-seeking missile, invisibility rune popped by Lizzie G there, looks like the Viper will get out in the end, YYSM oh, takes a lot of damage from Clinks, and he will end up falling, and, uh, even though he got four stuffed out, Lizzie G got a hand, land a nice hookshot bloodlock going to fall there, he does get the tombstone down, as Mr. Black is doing a lot of damage, Tyrant X with the mega kill there, he oh, is obliterating Lizzie G, but he's falling lower and lower as soon as one dies, looks like, uh, they all do get affected by the Aegis, going to come back up here, all of them respawn, Mr. Black's gonna try and burn down one as much as he can, but it is too late, ultra kill picked up by Tyrant X, can he get the Penta, he's chasing after the Viper, he blinks forward, will he get the ensnare off, looks like there's none in range with it up, Hookie with the corrosive skin, gonna be enough for him to get out, all the Meepos poofing forward, as uh, the Luna chasing as well, so, quadra kill for the Meepo there, Hawks. He is being played to perfection by Tyrant X. He's good at the micro on Lone Druid, even better with Meepo. Yeah, there you go. And it looks like Uzi's going to be trying to look for a little bit of a pick up. Not going to be able to find it, though. Uh, he did have the high ground visage there, not being able to attack him there. And he's probably going to get caught out in a second here and probably going to die again. Yeah, he has been spotted. The nets do go out. The first one doesn't land. He is quite fast, the Viper, with the, uh, with the, the base group and the Asha. TP support is all coming down as it, uh, coming down from uh, the die there, from Steel Gaming. He's going to be uh, heading into the tree line, going for that TP. Oh, yeah, he's able to get it off. Very well done there. Oh, looks like Reality Marble is going to be in some troubles. Crystal Maiden goes down to all. Well, Mr. Blake did all the damage and it was secured by Reality Marble there. So, nice little pickup as the Tinker is here. We can see Crestfallen up at the top with 11,000 net worth. Uh, Mr. Blake doing a nice job of trying to keep up, but the global presence of Steel with their Luna just split pushing all day. It's very difficult for them to deal with. They're trying to do as well as they can in these skirmishes as the Meepo is just going absolutely crazy. Ag Scepter finally gets finished by Lizzie G. Didn't manage to get it in the first game. He will get it now. And I'm not sure if this will be... Oh, looks like the hookshot will land onto Bloodlock. He's going to be focused down here. Will he pop the Flesh Golem? He will not just yet as Lizzie G trying to run out of there. All the Meepos are slowed down. Lizzie G falling lower and lower. He's popping the bottles. Looks like the mechanism going to go off. Hand of God will uh, not save him. Meepo takes down Clinks. Clinks buys back into the game. Chen picks up a kill, and Meepo buys back into the game. Viper gets a kill onto Bloodlock. Things definitely going in PA's favor in that fight with a three for one. They may lose their top tower. Glyph fortification goes out. Do they have anyone in range to deal with this? Backdoor protection will lock in, and the tower almost falls there. Beautiful fight for the PA guys, Hawks. Yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty long one, man. A buyback there from the team. Uh, oh, on the... mid lane. Looks like Huki Shinono is going to jump onto Bullvi with the Viper Strike. You are not getting out of that one. I actually got that name right. There you go. With uh, the uh, backup from Venomancer. It looks like Luna is going to fall up the top. Tyrant X is going to pick up a kill on to the Chen at the bottom lane. So the kills are equaled up two for two at the moment as Tyrant X will pick himself up a double damage rune if one of them manages to go over and get it. Will indeed Huki Shinono going to be in the mid lane here as the PA guys are ensuring that the top lane is nice and pushed out so Luna can't push that one out anymore. We'll have a look. It's f over 5,000 gold in Steel Gaming's favor. They were at 7,500 until they started dying in the uh, XP, that is. We have another Ogre Club picked up by Crest Fallen as Regeneration going to be popped by... I I'm not sure who it was who popped that one. Looks like the uh, the PA guy is going to be caught out of position here. They can't defend this bottom tower in time. They're just going to farm up as much as they can. That is the... Uh, looks like Paws going to go out. Whew. I'm losing uh, my voice. <laughs> it, it gives you a break there. Um, uh, what actually happened there, man? Tyrant with that double damage, that backdoor protection was uh, was on on that tower there, which which makes the uh, tower HP regen quite fast. And he just dumped through it, man. Doesn't even uh, care. <laughs> 
Yeah, with that DD uh, rune in the in the what the five or six mepos that he's got rolling around there, just smacked the crap out of it, man. Uh, however, we are starting to see um, a viper get up a few items, man. He's definitely going to be able to uh, put out some damage in these team fights now. He has been behind for quite some time, but yeah, now he's starting to catch up, starting to deal some damage, which is uh, good. Also, um, the uh, the clinks as i said if he's able to to catch anybody on their own he will take them out with uh with strafe and um his death pact and also searing arrows man so he was able to pick off the luna there and yeah if if they don't get that push on and that constant push it's gonna kind of you know swing more in the way of uh pa's favor in my opinion if they're able to you know get those pick off kills because eventually uh they're gonna have enough death time to you know start pushing some serious towers down as uh we've got yysm reconnecting there was buybacks from the meepo and i think from the clink so their next respawns are gonna have some additional time put under them i mm. uh, wanted to talk about the items coming but i was gonna say oh steel gaming they still don't have a mechanism on the hogs which i thought would be pretty important against a, uh, a clockwork and a venomancer we've got the uh of course the mechanism and the hand of god on the side of uh, Premi Agmini and it's been used fantastically so far has definitely saved someone a few times as Roche that's quite a while until Oop, he's back up go, Mr. Black we... Whoa! doesn't manage yeah, to get oh no there one. we go <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think you saw that one. Oh yeah well the last arrow did hit him I didn't even see that one go off <laughs> okay well there you go so another pick off and you were just saying that Hawks if they pick off they'll be looking good and that's exactly what they're doing at the moment the main Meepo gonna be checking out Roche as the top lane the uh, oh the clockwork pick I mean Lizzie G's been doing a fantastic job but the global flare he, he's so accurate with it like even predicting where things are going to go off it looks oh, like the, here we go oh he's going to engage on oh no actually he's going to get engaged on try and pop the cogs and snares going to be chained on the hooky Shinono he can't get out of that one Ag Scepter picked up for the Luna so the Eclipse will be stronger Four stuff goes off from Chen does manage to get the teleport off as Mr. Black is just sitting up here stealth was a two for two in the end there Hawks so fairly decent Mr. Black is gonna try and get some assassination going on there is a sentry ward though they've got to be careful Chris Fallen definitely saw him just then he will get the Eclipse off or oh, not the Eclipse sorry the Lucent Beam but it is not enough as uh, I believe Steel came, yeah, they definitely got one more kill. I think it must have been a three for two in their favor because they were behind in a kill. Now it is once again Radiant equal. They're going to be banger. smashing this mid tower. Oh, when I say smashing, I mean just kind of tickling it at the moment. As uh, they're okay, starting to work on the team. Oh, sorry, I completely missed the Meepos jumping onto Reality Marble there. Tyrant X doing a fantastic job. As Mr. Black. Well, Mr. Black is caught out of position as well. There is a sentry ward there, so he's all kinds of screwed there. Not entirely sure if there was a bit of miscommunication or not there. But, uh, yeah. I'd say just good, good, uh, good sentry ward placement by Bullvi. He's doing very well. Yeah, fair enough. Um, personally, I mean, uh, that seemed fairly suicidal to me. Yeah. We're going to oh. see Meepo blinking in as well, <laughs> going for those spots. He has caught out uh, Lizzie G here. He is netted. Uh, did I just see the better man? So, oh, bust it. Yeah, I did. So there's going to be a fair amount of damage. The uh, Viper getting a smacked by that laser beam. So there's all kinds of kills going out right now. That Tombstone as well is uh, going to be taking care of any kind of... Um, Incoming resistance. Uh, Huki is still going for that kill. Is he going to be able to find the Tinker Dime? No, he gets that TP out as well, dude. So that was definitely a, uh, a pretty bad fight. I think the Huki uh, as well brought back. Yeah, he I... did. The Viper, yes. Yeah. He even got a debuff, that's saying. So, yeah, that was fantastically played from Steel. Bloodlock was the only casualty there, and it was right at the end. Crestfallen is, uh, we have to try and guess his next item. Tower. What are you thinking, Hawks? What's he gonna buy next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know you could buy that. Sure tower. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure looking at picking up. 
but um, to the top I don't know if there's any viewers. Do we have a Do we have a channel on? Yep. So if uh, oh, I've got a minute delay, so uh, hopefully they catch up soon <laughs> and can let us know. So Alpha Wolf being picked up by Chris Fawn, he'll be happy with that one. The pack leader's aura, of course, very powerful. We'll just have a quick read of it. Commanding in presence, thirty percent bonus damage. That is ridiculous. As Tyrant X, he does have the invisibility rune. All of them are going to jump on top of Lizzie G. He cannot get out of there. Boots of Trouble went off by YYSM. I don't think he managed to pick up an assist in that one. As the push is going down, down at the bottom lane by the uh, the two ranged carries of Premi Agmini. Roche is up in a minute and 45 seconds. As Tyrant X going to... No, he can't see Mr. Black. Mr. Black going to jump Looks forward. Like he gets the Orchid of Elevance off. Silence by the uh, aforementioned item. And Meepo... I don't think he's going to be phased by this one, Hawks. He's got his uh, his little army just north. He does have his army north. He can't currently call him in right now due to... Um... Oh, he's already queued it up. If you look at the... Uh, no, hang on. They, they're not silent, so they can jump in. They, they've already got the W queued up. Oh, okay. I think well, Mr. Black is in some trouble here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Does he have his BKB? He doesn't have his BKB either. But, um, yeah, and I think he's just about to realise that he's... Uh, <laughs> Wait a second, this may not have been the best of ideas. Yeah, there is um, uh, the Chen in support. He does have his hand of God up, but also we've got Bloodlock heading uh, towards Mr. Black as well. And uh, I really don't think with that Scardi, that's a, that's a lot of slow, by the way, because um, the Geo Strike has that passive slow that stacks as well. Mm. So uh, there's just going to be a significant amount of um, not getting away ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> Okay, so waiting for uh, it was uh, the Tinker, who of course is YYSM, and of course now Clockwork going to be disconnecting as well. Waiting for the boom to come down on Mr. Black, YYSM going to reconnect. So we're just waiting on the Clockwork now. I think this is definitely Steel Games losing, uh, Steel Gaming's game to lose. There we go. I, uh, I think you're passing the uh, passing the mix words mixed up to me, Hawks. So they've uh, still have taken down every outer piece of infrastructure. The mid tower is looking pretty weak, and they've shown that they can just completely disregard the towers at this point. So I'm not sure what Premier Agmini can do at this point. Mm. By the chat, it looks like it's um, going to be GG anyway. I think Lizzie has to, uh, or Lizzie G has to bail there, and uh, looks like that might be the end of it. I, I was just going to say, Lizzie has played so well in both games, really. Mm. It's, uh, I really like how these teams have been so polite to each other, like even pausing for the other team. As, uh, it looks like we will unpause here. The clockwork right, is out of the are. game. Mr. Black, he... Uh, oh, the poof's actually missed there, but it doesn't even matter. He's going to be surrounded there. Bloodlock, I don't think he managed to get an assist from that one. And the Ancient will again fall a 2-0 sweep here, Hawks. That was a great series. Shout out to Ralph there. Oh, maybe ZGC uh, is the Ralph. What's that? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 fair enough. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, we'll have to nominate an MVP this one. I'm in favour of giving it to, uh, the clockwork Lizzie G. He, he did phenomenal. And he managed to get his eggs this time. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Uh, he did play well once again, getting those really good, uh, really good hook shots, especially that one up the top there. Um, he yeah. didn't have any vision. It, it was just a gut instinct shot of where he think uh, their support might be. And just absolutely nailed it. Was pulling off shots like that for both of the series. So yeah, definitely uh, big plays go to her. Unfortunately, uh, he she had to bail. Mm. So that'd be the end of it. Of of what was a good game there is. It was going to be interesting to see who was coming out on top. Steel was in a commanding position, but one fight anywhere could have turned that all around. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. We definitely have to give an honorary mention to Tyrant X, who played a strong lone druid in the first one, and an outstanding Meepo, who was level 25, and the rest of his team were at level 11 and 13, so 
He was definitely showing what good micromanagement can bring. He was almost at a thousand XP a second. As uh, Bullvise saying he hates clinks. And uh, yeah, 18 kills. Mr. Black was doing pretty well, so <laughs> it's pretty justified, I think. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We hope to bring you some more Cyber Gamer games tomorrow night. Uh, if you head on over to GameStar's Facebook, we will um, bring that to It's actually down the bottom of the screen at the moment. Really glad Hawksbuck was able to join me, despite the internet issues. Any parting words, my friend? Nah, that's it from me, folks. Alright, have a wonderful, uh, what are we up to, Monday night? And we'll see you tomorrow. This is Cold Blood and Hawksbuck signing out.